Welcome everybody to our Discover Panama, your guide to buying real estate abroad webinar. We're so happy you all are here. Just wanna do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, as you noticed that when you came in, we had you muted. So if you guys don't mind uh, um, either muting again so we don't get any background noise. Sometimes I know people come in unexpected or dogs bark or things happen. So we will at the end be taking questions, but um, you can either unmute yourself and ask them at the end or you can put them in the chat. And as you saw, Jasmine does a great job of uh, monitoring that. Uh, if you've already signed up, you should have received in your email, probably within the last hour, the book, Buying and Flipping Properties in Panama, written by Mike Vitovich, who's joining us today. And um, uh, please mute your cell phones. We are looking forward to spending the next hour with you uh, sharing some of the secrets and fun things about Panama. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Vitovich and Jasmine Caballero, who are with Inside Panama Real Estate. Mike is um, from the U.S., San Diego area, has been in Panama for about 16 years. And Jasmine is in Boquete, born and raised in Panama. But I also just want to let you know that Inside Panama Real Estate has been nominated for the past three years as the number one listing and selling agents in Panama. They have eight offices across the country, so they know it really well. They've got lots of experience, and Mike has a lot of experience with um, buying and flipping in Panama. So any of you guys who are interested in, in doing the investing, he's a, a great source. So without uh, further ado, Mike, do you want to introduce yourself a little further? Sure. Thanks, Cynthia. For, uh putting this together. Uh, I'm Mike Vitovich. I'm the, the founder of Inside Panama. Uh, I've actually been here for 18 years. Um, the company's been here for 16, but um, came here from San Diego, California, uh, toured around the country for two years to get acclimated and do some demographics and launched a real estate company literally on my dining room table right here in Coronado. And um, here we are today with eight offices and lots of employees um we really we really take what we do very serious uh, most of our clients are uh, expats uh we feel like we're well positioned for that because being an american i uh, i understand the american or north americans needs and of course we speak the same language and um we're real excited to be able to help people uh, relocate to panama great thank you Jasmine, do you want to expand a little bit on what I, I said? Yes. Hello, how are you? I'm Jasmine, the CEO of Inside Panama. I've been working in real estate since 2012, which is 12 years already. And I have seven years in uh, at Inside Panama. I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy helping people also. And I born and raised here in, in Boquete. So... I can guide you also by all the local sources that you can get familiar with it, with everything here in, in Panama, having, you know, the experience to be a local, local person here. So thank you. I'm here. <laughs> and just to introduce myself, I'm Cynthia Lehman. I'm a certified international property specialist. I travel the globe and I have connections everywhere so I can I introduce you to people like uh, Jasmine and Mike. I also had the opportunity to live in Panama for almost 17 years and lived every minute of it. Traveled like uh, Mike and Jasmine across the country, which is uh, really cool, easy to do. And, um, you know, a lot of people, I think, um, don't give Panama enough credit for the picture that you see there in the middle is actually Panama City. And it looks like Miami. I think people are always amazed because of a lot of people don't even know where it's located. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about today why Panama is so fantastic and um, how you can can move here, purchase property, and enjoy a really great lifestyle. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about um, what are the key factors that make Panama attractive for expats and investors. Jasmine, do you want to start with that? Yes. And the first one is the low cost of living. 
So we we can see, for example, all the, la the, the labor cost for like maids, handymans, also gardeners is very low here. So also the food uh, is very affordable, mostly if you are in areas where you can get directly from the producers, like uh, the vegetables, fruits. So it's, it's very important um, that you you understand that here you will save a lot of money in those costs of living. So also the modern infrastructure, uh, mostly in Panama City. So like this, the skylines of these high buildings, you know, we have we have a, a very also a um, big market in Panama for commercial and also the use of the US dollar here in Panama. So that means that we use this uh, like the worldwide currency and it's, that's very important. Also, the, we have uh, a tropical climate, which, which we just have two seasons in the year, which is raining season or green season and summer season. So basically we don't, and we don't have hurricanes, we don't have tornadoes. So also we, what is very important here is that we have a wel welcoming expat community where you know there is a significant expatriate community that you can get access by the social network. People can recommend you like different ways to get more familiar with Panama, high quality of life, and the diverse of real estate market depends where you wanna go. If you want to go to the mountains, if you, if you want to go to the beach, if you want to go, you know, like um, in the countrysides, um, we have a very, very large diversity. And we have also an stable economy. Very good. All very important points. Mike, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, maybe just a little bit about the medical care. Uh, I was I was pretty impressed with the medical care when I first came here, and in fact, recently had a little a little mishap. I, I nipped off the uh, the tip of my finger uh, pruning, um, and I was kind of panicked, just kind of wrapped it up with paper towels. And I went off to the doctor, doctor's office. And didn't have an appointment, of course. Uh, just walked in and said, help. Um, approximately 20 minutes later, I was all done, all bandaged up. Um, I, had a, I had a couple of prescriptions. The doctor visit was $17. Prescriptions were $49. And about 10 days later, I'm back to playing golf. Um, <laughs> So actually, the medical care is pretty darn good here, and it's of course it's a lot, a lot less expensive than than North America. Uh, so I just thought I'd share that. Yeah, we're we're gonna go into a little bit more of that later in the um, in the webinar, but right. um, and we can expand on a little bit dental care, health care. No matter, you know, we've got story after story of all of our friends that have had mishaps that have had great turnouts on that. So. You know, it's always one of the important questions that we ask. But, um, you know, the beauty of, of Panama is that no matter whether you want to be in the mountains or at the beach or at the ocean or at the cities, everything is really easily accessible, either, you know, driving across the country or flying. Right. So you can drive from Panama City to Boquete and uh, what, seven hours from one end of the country to the other. Or Maybe. you can fly. Or, I'm sorry. Maybe less. Uh, yesterday they opened eight, uh, how you call it, eight carriers in the highway from Panama, uh, uh, from Panama City. So actually, that will be less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, since since you've been there, there's been so much changed, right, Mike? All of the yeah, the groceries, grocery stores. Yeah. I remember when I when I first went, one of my key things was I I drink coffee, but I don't want it to taste like coffee. So it was like as long as they have my coffee creamer, I was good to go <laughs> and now well, we've got starbucks everywhere there's all kinds of, of it's very very i don't want to say americanized but there's a lot of things that you can get from all over the world in um, panama not to mention they have the most expensive coffee per pound right the geisha coffee is yes. and i'm going to leave that for you guys to google later what is how much does geisha coffee um, in panama cost so with that, we're going to move on to overview of visas. So uh, those of you who are from Europe or know about Europe, you've got that 90 day Schengen thing where you can, uh, or it's 180 days, right? Where you have to get out of the country. Um, so 
Uh, Panama has something similar, but we do have ways around that with visas. So um, Jasmine and Mike, can you tell us a little bit about what some of the visas, without going into detail, because I know we're not lawyers, we're not accountants, but we can certainly uh, hook people up with those, those people who that's what their job is. But we just want to give everybody a little bit of an overview of the, yeah. the different type of visas that are available here. Jasmine, would you start? Yes. Okay, so the different types of visas that Panama offers, one is the Friendly Nation visa, is for citizens or selected countries. So also we have the Pensionario visa, which is for retired with a lifetime pension, and the Self-Economic Solvency visa, which is the one that requires an, a specific investment in property and then or a bank deposit. So... There is other one, uh, which is uh, the one where where the investments make uh, a big investment is called Qualified Investors Visa. So that grants fast track residents, residents for through larger investments. So basically what you have to do is uh, in the moment uh, that you come to Panama and you engage with an attorney, find out which one is the much better for your requirements. And Mike, you have um, a visa. When I was there, I had a friendly nations visa because I was still doing business, but my husband re was retired. So that's the type of visa that he had. And they were both fairly easy. I think that one so, of the, I think one of the reasons that Panama is on many people's list as they consider options is Panama may be one of the easiest countries in the world to gain residency. There's so many options and ways to do it. Um, and I think that, like you said, I I came as, as a pensionado. I was retired actually when I came here. Um, and as a pensionado, I was not allowed to work, but I could run my own company. Uh, so, which of course I ultimately ended up doing. But then they changed the laws and they said that now, even if you had your own company, you had to have a work permit which was kind of contradictory to uh, a pension auto visa in the first place. So they had to reconsider all that and review it. And uh, long story short, I came on a pension auto, but today I uh, I have a work permit and I'm not sure my status has changed, uh, but at any rate, there's a lot of options and a lot of ways to become a resident here. Yeah, um, and we've, um... We've got lots of resources that we can connect people to to answer all of those in-depth questions that, that we don't know the answer to. Great. Let's talk a little bit about the taxation system, because that's always a big thing, right? Do I have to pay taxes? What happens to my taxes when I'm coming from somewhere else? Uh, and Mike, I'm going to ask you to start on this one, if you don't mind. Okay, well... Taxation in Panama is one subject, of course, it's it's the amount of tax that you pay on money that's earned in Panama. Panama does not tax you on money earned outside of Panama. However, where you come from uh, has some impact on your, your tax exposure. So for instance, if you're from the United States, the United States taxes you on your worldwide income. Uh, however, it's not really double taxation, if you will, because you're credited for what the amount that you paid to Panama. So, for instance, if you're working here in Panama and you're a resident of Panama, uh, you can qualify, you, you, you can apply for a, a, uh, an exemption in the United States uh, for the first $110,000 or $112,000 that you make net. The reason I say 10 or 12 is because it goes up a little bit each year. Um, it's a, a foreign earned income exclusion. So the first, like I say, 110 or 12,000 that you make uh, net is not taxable in the United States. If you exceed that number and you have to pay tax to the US, you'll be credited for the amount that you already paid in Panama. Uh, like Cynthia said, we're not lawyers or accountants and I, I would definitely recommend as it relates to taxation that you consult with uh, a Panamanian accountant as well as a U.S. accountant uh, and figure out what's, you know, what's, what's best for you for structure. 
Thank you. And with that being said, Jasmine, um, part of what we were going to talk about is property taxes. So if someone does purchase property in Panama, how do the taxes there work? The property taxes in Panama are actually very, very low. In fact, uh, we have uh, tax exemptions on properties and the tax, the properties that are uh, the first 120,000 value register of the property is always exempt forever. And that's something that can be transferred in the property to other owners. So also, if there is a property that you have registered, for example, in $200,000, the first $120,000 is exempt. And then the rest is, it will be between 0.5% to 1%, depends on, on higher the property value is. Okay, so, and there is also incentive to retires and investors, but it's very, very low. It's between 0.5% to 1% of the register value of the property. Okay, very good, thank you. And we can go into further details on that later too, if somebody has any specific questions when we get to the question and the answer part. So let's talk about popular investment regions. We talked about, we have beaches, we have mountains, we have cities. What do you guys see as some of the, the more popular areas for people who are coming to Panama? Jasmine? Uh, okay, we have uh, Boquete, of course. <laughs> Boquete is a, it's a mountain town is with a cooler climate. You know, in the highlands, we have, uh, as I said before, we have access to fresh food, which people really like. Also, the fresh coffee. Um, we have the biggest city close to us is, is David, which is 30 minutes driving from Boquete, and where you can find big stores, big also malls. There is also the main name for airport where you can fly from David uh, to Panama City in 40 minutes to one hour. Also, we have uh, Coronado, which is a beach community popular for vacation homes and retires. It's a, actually it's very close to Panama. So it has a proximity around like one hour and a half, right? Like, yeah, so it depends where you wanna be, but uh, those are very famous. Also, we have uh, Panama City, which is, which is more like a modern um, a city. And then it has a strong rental market and business opportunities, business friendly environment for people that is coming from out of the country also and giving you a lot of opportunities. So it's also good for commercial investments. So we have uh, also Bocas del Toro, known as because it's a, it has the island style and it's mostly for people that wants to be in a tranquil and place close to the jungle, close to, you know, wild animals also, and attracts uh, vacation um, property buyers and also people that want to invest in boutique resorts. So we have a very diverse um, real estate market here where people want to come. So it depends where you want to go, but we have very good opportunities. Very good. Mike, would you like to add anything to that? Well, I think Jasmine pretty much nailed it. Uh, it's, you know, really the, the most popular places. Like I said, I toured around the country for a couple of years and Panama's endless beauty. I found myself jumping out of the van every other day thinking I'd found the most beautiful spot. But after a while, I, I started focusing more on infrastructure and amenities and things that people would be looking for and pretty much came down to Panama City. Uh, the Gold Coast along the, the, you know, the Pacific Beach Coast here where I'm at today. Uh, Boquete, of course, was rated number one in the world to retire for many years now. Um, and then, the, the, you know, there's a lot of people that like the Caribbean side. That's why they end up over in Boca del Toro. That's that's over on the Caribbean. Uh, you can get there in an hour and a half from uh, actually less than that from Panama City. Um so those are those are the the, the places that most people uh, gravitate to. Uh, of course, there's areas like in the Azuero Peninsula, Petisi, uh Boca Chica that people are starting to find out about. Um, they're just a little bit ahead of the infrastructure and the amenities. Very good, thank you. Well, yeah. now that we know where we want to invest, can you talk a little bit about the uh, process of buying property in Panama, including legal requirements and um, any associated costs, Jasmine? 
Yes. Okay, so in the moment that you identify the property that you want to buy, uh, the most important is that you hire a, a lawyer. So in this case, um, every time that we have uh, buyers, we recommend them attorneys that we we know that they are reliable and honest, and they will be finding solutions uh, for the clients. So that's the most important. The attorney will have uh, a, the essential work to engage, uh, you know, to start looking for investigating the properties, like if there is no escombrances, lions, if the property has clear title, which is the most important. So when you hire the attorney, then you have a period of time to do the property due diligence, where he will start doing all those, all those research. And then at the same time, what we always recommend is that uh, while your attorney is doing that research, you make a house inspection in the house and you make a resolve on the property. So that way, you know what's the status of the construction if you are getting a house and also a resolve to make sure that that's the same size that the owner says that is selling to you. So when you have that ready and everything is okay, then the attorney will draft, uh, we have already a draft for the contract to sign. And that's the moment when you review also the other parties review. So when everybody is agreed, you make a 10% down payment, which is the minimum. It can be also more, that's negotiable. And then you establish a, a closing time. So in the moment that you have the closing time ready, all the documents are ready from the seller to, to deliver to the buyer's attorney, then you sign um you make the 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 down payment the sorry the balance payment and then you sign the deed which will be transferred into your name so basically those are the steps and the legal requirements for foreign to buy a property actually you have kind of the same rights as a locals so it's just uh, for the attorney to make sure that the property is registered in a correct way and then the associated costs for the attorneys, it will depend. There is attorneys that had flat fees and they charge you ex extra if the property has to, to pay like extra taxes or things or solve problems and all that. Or there is our attorneys also that they charge you between 1% to 2% of the registered value of the sale. So then the other associated cost for the seller will be the transfer tax, which is 2% and 3%, but that's paid by the seller. And for the buyer, the notary and registration fees. So for, it depends. So in both sides, for example, I can explain you like for the seller, it will be transfer taxes, the attorney, and the real estate commission. And for the buyers will be the attorney, the legal uh, legal fees from the attorney and the notary and registration fees, which will be 0.5% to 1% of the property value. That's not too expensive. What's a resolve? A resolve is, uh, okay, when you are buying a property, let's say a house, uh, and they say, okay, you are getting a quarter of an acre. So the, the resolve is to make sure that you are getting actually the quarter of an acre that they are selling to you. It may be, it may be times where there is a difference on the size, and that can be negotiable with the seller before you sign okay. the promissory contract. Very good. Um, Mike, before I ask my next question, do you have anything to add? Because I want to go into whether um, expats can get loans in Panama and how do how do they normally pay for their properties? Okay. No, really, the only thing I think I might add is that um, when the buyer makes that after they've done their due diligence, and then they're presented with that promise to purchase contract, which is the equivalent of escrow instructions in North America, when you hand over that 10% deposit, that money is non-refundable. So you want to make certain that you've done all of your due diligence, because when you hand that money, you won't, you won't see that back. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Jasmine, can can I get a loan from a, a bank in Panama to buy property as an expat? Yes, actually, uh, there is a bank right now that is giving a lot of opportunity to expats to get uh to get loans. So 
the bank is Banesco. And if you want to know more about it, I can give you the contact information of the lady that is the manager of the branch that is helping expats to get uh, loans. And yes, the interest rate is between uh, 7% to 8%. So, but to go more, for, more further, so I prefer that the, the people, the clients interested get into in contact with the lady because they have different benefits depends of the different needs of the client. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. But that's encouraging. Yes. Because people always ask. That's that was yeah. Actually, let me add something. Uh, we had a situation with a client that he came here just to get an idea of Boquete and he found the house that he says, I cannot lose that house. So. Basically, he went to the to the lady, and now he's buying the house. Very good. So he went to Benesco and was able to secure a loan. Very good. Yeah, that's encouraging. Very encouraging. All right. So we talked a little bit earlier about the healthcare system when Mike tried to take the top of his finger off. Um, it had good <laughs> results. And um, my husband and I both have a lot of experience with expats in the healthcare system down there, and I can't say enough. Um, not being there, I definitely, definitely miss it because, Mike, when you went to the doctor, you didn't even make an appointment. You just walked in the door. Um, and, you know, I know when we were there, my husband had some extensive uh, dental work done and we had the uh, dentist uh, WhatsApp number for those of you who, you know, it's, a, it's your cell phone number that works um, internationally and you can talk to anybody anywhere. Uh, if you don't have it, it's a great thing to download. And uh, it's a great way to stay in touch with all of your family and friends when you're not in the area. But they check on us. I mean, it was it was just phenomenal. And a lot of people say it's like healthcare was back in the 60s in the United States. So with that being said, can you guys tell us a little bit how that healthcare operates and what's available for expats and retirees or digital nomads or anybody who wants to, to come that's not a Panamanian? Jasmine? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have both public and private um, healthcare here. Of course, the public one is more affordable, but you have to be prepared that you have to wait for long lines sometimes. Um, but if we also have uh, the private one, which is the one like Mr. Mike used when he had the accident with his finger, which is actually very, very affordable and is quickly. So you want to get a quickly service you just go there and pay but it's it's nothing compared like the prices that you would pay in united states also there is insurance companies that they offer you a, a private insurance that covers the medical services and they are very affordable too so we can also refer refer them to you that they can get you uh quotes for this kind of insurance and then that way you don't have to be concerned that if you go there you have to wait until uh, the doctor is available because you have a long lane waiting for you. But we have both systems, so public and private, and they are very, very affordable. Mike, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I, as far as health insurance, um, it, is, it is a little bit limited uh, depending on your age. Um, there, are, there are options here in Panama where you can get worldwide insurance, which really covers catastrophic kind of stuff that would like for me, if I had something catastrophic, I could fly back to the States if I chose to. Um, but here in Panama, you can get, you can buy insurance direct with the hospital. So uh, for instance, if you decided to move to Boquete, you could go to David and go to uh, the Chiriqui hospital and purchase insurance from them. Uh, of course, you'd have to go to them to get, uh, to get service. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit restrictive. After 70 years old, it gets very difficult to find health insurance here. So um, that's something that uh, definitely is worthy of looking into um, prior to relocating to Panama, only to find out later that there's some challenges, but they're very, they're very solvable. I just joined Medicare um, just only in the last week or two there are now two hospitals in David that are uh, working with Medicare. So it's slowly, it's getting better, but right now it's, 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 um, it, it, it definitely is a little bit complicated. Yeah. Uh, all, 
all easy to figure out how to oh, how it works oh, yeah. for you. And, and that also that determines sometimes where if you are looking, if you're not looking for an investment property, but you're looking for something for yourself, you know, one of the questions we ask, right? How mm -hmm. how close to healthcare do you need to be? Because you know, it's not like some of these places aren't 10 minutes down the street, depending on where you want to be. But right. as you can see in the picture, we have Hospital Punta Pacifica. And for those from the United States, we're familiar with Johns Hopkins University or Johns Hopkins, John mm -hmm. Hopkins Hospital in uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area. And this particular hospital is affiliated with them. So it's probably one of the, the top notch hospitals in Panama, which is located in Panama City. Again, my husband and I have um, experience with them, and I can't say enough positive things. My husband had some heart issues and um, got the top heart doctor in the area. And to this day, he still emails the doctor asking him questions. The doctor responds within usually an hour, and we never, and he never pays him anything. I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor guy. But it is <laughs> such a different level of care in Panama than it is in the United States. I mean, when you tell people that, I think they think you're you're making up stories, but it's a, it's just, it's very, very amazing. And like I said, I can't say enough positive things. And um, I know you guys probably feel the same way as well. So, and yeah, yeah well, actually, we can ask. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Actually, the, the day after I saw the doctor for my finger, uh, the following day, I, I, I got a phone call and I looked down and I saw it was him. And I thought I knew seventeen dollars was too good to be true. I thought he was calling me to tell me that, but uh, <laughs> he was just calling me to see if everything was okay, if I was in any pain, if there was anything else he could do for me. I, I know that for you know all my life in the U.S., I never had a doctor call up and follow up like that. Um, so it was, I was pretty impressed. Uh, yeah, apparently that's not unusual. You know, very complex. It just reminds one last example. We had some young friends because Panama, when we first got there, it was mostly retirees and expats. But now we talked earlier about being living in a digital world and we have a lot of younger families that so we're going to get into um, the school systems. But one of my young friends, um, uh, where was she? Uh, I can't remember what country she was from in Europe, but she was pregnant and she was driving from Panama City back to the beach. And by the time she got home, the doctor had called to make sure that she had made it home safely. I'm like, oh, whoever heard of that, right? So it was, it was amazing. So mm -hmm. with that, let's move on to um, what are some of the common challenges that expats face when they're relocating to Panama and how can they be overcome? Jasmine? Um, okay, I would say the, the language. The language is uh, is one of the challenges. The good thing is that here in Panama, everywhere you go, there is always somebody that speaks English and that is able to help you. And also we have uh, a lot of uh, small schools that teach Spanish to expats. And in the moment that you get into the community, you get involved with Panamanians also on expatriates, you start also um, getting more communication. So. It depends if you want or you don't want to learn Spanish, you will be always find a solution because everybody, you know, everywhere there is basically somebody that speaks English and is mm -hmm. always able to help. We really like to to help everybody. So we like to service everybody. So that's that's something that when people come here, they are in shock, like, oh, I don't understand. But then in the moment that they start looking and it, even trying to talk or use your phone to translate, you will find out that all Panamanians will be more than happy to help you. So that that's one thing. And also, um, let me see, um, the time. We, our culture in Panama, we are very relaxed on time. So that's something that you have to be ready. So here in Panama, let's, let me give you an example. If we have a, a Christmas party where you are invited and we say seven o'clock, you go there at seven o'clock and nobody, just the owner of the house will be there. <laughs> so like one hour or two hours later, people will start arriving. So we are very relaxed on time. So that's something that you have to be prepared. For me, that's actually 
what I see, uh, the expats, you know, they, it, it's a little bit more challenging for them. But other than that, I think, I don't know if Mr. Mike wants to add something else, but for me, that's the main things. Yeah, I really found that for me, <laughs> I came here type A. Um, in many ways, I still am, but it, I found pretty early on that um, I had to dial my expectations back. Um, not that not that the Panamanian culture was good or bad or right or wrong. It was definitely different. Um, and either I had to adapt or always be frustrated and upset. Um, and I found that since I've adapted and kind of dialed it back, I'm, I'm a lot less stressed. I don't expect it to happen, whatever it is, to happen right this minute or to go exactly the way I expect it to go. Um, so I guess in a nutshell, when you come to Panama, it's a good idea to bring an open mind and some patience. Um, and you know, <laughs> it'll get a lot easier, a lot easier. Um, yeah, maybe that's why yeah. they, that's why the Latin culture is the way it is. They 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 enjoy life. We uh we tend to be chasing after superfluous things, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think the part of that is like what what's your list? Why is it that you are looking to relocate to Panama? Right? Is it a lifestyle thing? Is it you know it's a great investment thing? But Panama in the past has been voted happiest country in the world to live in as well, yeah. too. So yeah. it is, um, I think there's there's so many hidden features that until you actually get there, you don't you don't realize. Um, and I I didn't, when I was there, I didn't, didn't want for anything. My husband didn't learn any Spanish. He was very good at charades. And to Jasmine's point is everybody's very, very patient because we always worry about how do they how do they look at us, right, as we're coming in as expats in another country? And, and, you know, I travel a lot, so I'm always cognizant of that as well and trying to learn at least a few words, you know, thank you and please, so you can at least show some some of your manners. So that's probably the two biggest things is the the language and just recognizing that it's not, that that's not the lifestyle that you live in and probably in Europe and the United States. It's a lot low, more low key. So thank you for sharing that. We talked a little earlier about some of the weather that, um, but just to reiterate, we had some folks that jumped on a little later. So what is the weather like, Jasmine, in Panama? We have uh, in Panama, it's a tropical um, climate weather. So we have two seasons. We have uh, dry season, well, not dry, uh, I mean, summer season <laughs> and raining season, which we call green season. So a uh, summer season is basically since December to April, and since May to November is a uh, green season or rainy season. It, it depends where you are located. For example, if you are in the highlands, it's a little bit more cooler, and also in the lowlands, it's a little bit more warmer. So it can be between 75 far, uh, like Fahrenheit to 90 Fahrenheit. That will be between 24 cents Celsius to 32 Celsius. It depends where you are located. If you are located closer to the ocean, it's, it's, more, it's more warmer over there. But if you are in, in the mountains, then it's more fresh. It depends where you want to be. So that, that's, I think it's very good when you come to Panama that you identify where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And then experiment the weather. This weather is awesome. Here we don't have to buy clothes for snow or change the tires of the car. We don't have that expenses at all. So we are the <laughs> same all the time. <laughs> you want to add something else, Mr. Mike? Well, I mean, you know, again, as I drove around the country for a couple of years, it, it's a very, very diverse country. And um, it really, like you said, it depends on your flavor. If you want to be on the Caribbean, it's there. If you want to be in the city, there's a very, very vibrant lifestyle in the city. Uh, yeah. there's, there's the old city, uh, which is very historical, and um, there's the beaches and where Jasmine is right now in the highlands, which is also my favorite uh, because of the temperature. It's about 70 degrees year round, uh, and it's either 70-ish and dry or 70-ish and wet, um, and it's about 50-50. So uh, the weather here is very, very... Uh, 
Yeah, very nice. I like it here a lot. Uh, but, but, but no matter where I am, really, it's a little warmer here at the beach, but when I get to the highlands, it's perfect. Well, when you guys say wet, what does that mean? Like, does it rain all day, every day during rainy season? Or what am I looking at here? Usually in the beginning of the rainy season, it might rain for an hour in the afternoon. Um, and then as we progress, it turns into two hours or three hours. And as we get further into the rainy season, it might rain for half the day. It might rain for the whole day. But um, oddly enough, the, 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 the ground here absorbs it very quickly like it can just pour rain uh where the, the golf course behind my house is completely soaked and the next day i can go play golf and it's dry it's just, so though it may rain a lot of inches it doesn't really impact us uh too significantly unless it's you know the middle of the rainy season okay very good we may have some further questions about that no hurricanes and no tornadoes yay <laughs> yeah <laughs> In, in the U.S., we've seen some real devastation here lately, and it's um, you know continuing to take a while for it to get resort, resolved. So um, moving to Panama, networks and resources, what do I have there that can help me? Uh, I'm hitting the ground and I don't know anybody or I only know you guys. Uh, where can you lead me? What kind of things are there to do there? Uh, you know, what is it I, I should first do when I land? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is uh, expat community groups uh, mm -hmm. that we can recommend uh, the clients and also there are also online expat community groups where you can join them and you will find groups to have uh, happy hours, you will find groups to go and talk about books, it depends what you want to do. But also there is a uh, local organizations and associations like the Panama American Chamber of Commerce. Also, the real estate agents can help you, you know, with experience to guide you where you want to go, what you want to do uh, with the regulations and market and all that. But for social, it's very good that you, st um, as a newcomer, you start joining the expat community groups like on Facebook. There is different groups, depends where you want to be. There is in Panama City, in the, in the beach, also in Coronado, Boca del Toro, Boquete, everywhere. So over there, you can see everything that they are sharing all the time, their experiences. And if you need a recommendation, where to find these, uh, how how I, I engage with a real estate agent or um, a doctor or something like that, they will tell you all the stories right away. And then you, can, you will be able to pick up somebody that you feel comfortable with it. Okay. Did I hear anything about happy hours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that we do when we engage with clients is we try to uh, get them integrated into the community that they're interested in. So we do host happy hours in several different locations. Uh, and it's a good opportunity for us to introduce current clients to past clients and people yes. that... Uh, that would be useful for them to know in the community. So we, we try to make that happen for them. Uh, in addition to all the different clubs and things that Jasmine mentioned, um, there's so many things to, to immediately get to meet the community. Of course, it's, it's a small country and most of the places that you select are small. Uh, so it doesn't take long um, to attend a couple of social events or a hiking group or a tennis group or a golf group or pickleball. There's so many things now. Uh, that you, you very quickly will uh, get acclimated to the community and the people in it. Yeah, pickleball is very popular everywhere. And I think I just saw that, was it Jinxie just won something or um, some international pickleball, something from yeah, Panama? They, they, yeah, they, they went to Peru. Uh, and yeah, Jinky, Jinky won one of her. The, 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 the Panamanian group actually did very, very well. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's the, everything. Too, right? <laughs> yeah, there's there's cards and there's blotchy and there's so you can be as active or not as you want. Lots of volunteer things. Um, you know, it's always um, spay the strays or helping um, local communities, the local Panamanian communities. I mean, anything you can think of, there's an opportunity for it. And if not, then I always tell people, then it's your opportunity to start it. 
So right. um, there's networking yeah, groups I'm, as I'm well. Really, I'm really impressed with how many people came here and midlife decided to start getting healthy. And I think Karen's kind of started it off, right? Next thing you know, they're running, riding bicycles and swimming, and they're they're in triathlons. And it's like, to me, that's amazing. All these people that we know that came here in the middle of their life and decided to take on those endeavors. And today they're doing triathlons. That's, to me, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've seen some really cool stuff for sure. And the size so of the group, oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the whole country has its. Um, yeah. It, it's but, yeah. And if you if you notice in the background on this particular page, it's the uh, Panama Canal, which a lot of people may or may not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, so one last question before we open it up to questions, and one of them is the um, the economy of Panama. And so I bring that up because uh, the Panama Canal is probably one of the the backbones of the economy. Jasmine or Mike, one of you two would like to talk about the economy in Panama. Yes. Um, okay. Here, uh, the, the Panama Canal, because we are in the middle of America, it helps. Uh, it has a lot of uh, maritime traffic. So that brings a lot of uh, a good income to, to Panama also. Um, um, I don't know if you want to add something else, Mr. Mike. Well, the economy here is is pretty robust. Uh, the the GDP is is very is very good compared to all the other Latin countries. Uh, since I've been here, it's really been very steady growth right up until, of course, COVID. Uh, but now, uh, a couple of years post COVID, Panama is definitely climbing back and is once again very strong in uh, the Latin American region. Uh, in fact, our our GDP is is uh, is probably very desirable from many countries. Uh, and, and like you like you touched on, the canal is just an amazing economic engine um, that really just keeps on going. In the worst of times, to, like like through COVID and the, the recent drought, the canal just kept on producing revenue for for Panama. Uh, so I think Panama economically is really a, a good pick, and and the future looks very bright. Very good. Thank you. All right, we are going to open it up for questions now. I know we are interested in knowing if anybody has been in Panama before. Some of you may already be in Panama, but with a show of hands, would you guys just uh, show us who's been to Panama before? Hmm. I've got some people that aren't on, so <laughs> it's a tough one. All right. With that, um, if, if you guys would like to ask some questions, just remember to unmute yourselves and we will take questions at this point. If you wanna just raise your hand. Steven, would you like to um, ask a question? Sorry, I was raising my hand for being in Panama before. Well, uh, actually I've not actually set foot in the country but i have traveled through the panama canal quite a few years ago perfect uh, i think it was in the mid 1990s I, I used to be in the royal navy um and the royal navy always have a presence in the caribbean they call it the uh wigs deployment which stands for the west indies guard ship um and while we were over there we we traveled through the panama canal and then went up the uh east um the west coast of America all the way up to Canada. Very nice. Interesting. But other than that, we've only been in the airport in transit when we went to Costa Rica a few years ago. Yeah. But we're coming this year. We uh, sorry, we're coming in 2025. Oh, good. We're coming to check it out because I'm eligible from my military and fire service pension. I was able to retire early. So I meet the requirement for the pension ARDO visa. And I would just have to more in information on that really with this call because we're gonna we're gonna uh, like Mike we're gonna like tour the country maybe for a few years see what it's like under the pensionado visa before we would commit to buying a property. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. What, what, and with, uh, sorry, Jasmine. With that, I was going to talk about you bring up a good point, Stephen, because Panama is the hub of the Americas. So in order to get to a lot of the other countries, you have to first go through Panama. So we have a 
a lot of flights in and out. They just opened the second um, airport right within Panama City. So uh, we've seen a lot of really positive growth and changes in Panama. Sorry, Jasmine, go ahead. No, I was going to ask him uh, when he's coming in next year. Yeah, uh, we're looking at probably coming over um, just after the new year. So it'll be sometime mid-January. So it will be summer season. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, what our plans would probably to come to the summer season there and your rainy season is our, obviously our summer season over, over in the UK. So that would work perfectly for us. Yeah, that's, that's kind really of cool. like what, we, what we're looking at at the moment. Um, just a question. Uh, we're not sure um, about whether we need a return flight when we come into Panama because we don't know how long we're going to stay for. Do I need a return ticket when I come in to apply for the pensionado visa? Or I understand we get 180 days. Is that correct? That is correct. However, when you purchase your ticket to come to Panama, you will need to show that you have a ticket to leave. Right. Okay. So we can maybe get a flexible return ticket. Yeah. Well, yeah. Flexible, I assume you mean that you can cancel it or change the yeah. date. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I think the um, the airlines they can charge you a little bit more, but you then yeah. have the option to be able to change it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it will be you'll need to have, I think it's at least six months on your passport as well. That's correct. Six months yeah. left before it expires. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we looked at that. My wife, my wife has to apply for a new passport. I'm okay at the moment, but she needs to get a new one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Swana, do you have a question? You're muted. If you'd like to ask a question. Also, one of the things while um, we're waiting for her is we didn't talk about what is some of the costs of uh, real estate in Panama. So what am I looking at it range wise? Like if I want a condo in the city, a condo at the beach, a condo in Bocate, or if I want a single family house, what am I looking at in terms of costs for those average? Hmm. Well, like everywhere, that really depends on where. Um, you know, like we said, Panama is very diverse. So you could get as low as she's. Six to eighty thousand dollars for a condo up to seven figures. And yes, of course, it really depends on where it is and how big it is and what kind of quality. Um, the it's really hard to give you a you know, I, I would say that our buyers, North American buyers, or, or even the Europeans that come, they typically wind up in the 250 <laughs> on up range. Um, there are there are buyers who move you know further out from the core and they're uh, you know they may be half that so what you're saying is no matter what my budget is you can you can help me out with that it depends on what, what your lifestyle yeah if you're flexible on your geographic location yes i mean you can't be beachfront and you know buy a hundred thousand dollar condo beachfront um, but if you look around, you could probably, you could probably, you know, further, further out from the core, you could get real close. Dan, did you have a question? Yeah, I actually had a, a couple. Do you recommend, um, renting first before buying? Typically, yes. Just to make sure that the area that you think you like six months later you still like it right right well i'm from florida so i'm kind of in the, we had the same weather here as down there okay uh i mean it pretty much same kind of thing with the rain we get rain every afternoon somewhere about an hour could last all day mm -hmm. uh i've 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 been i've joined a couple of groups on facebook and I'm looking at like where you're at in Coronado, uh, Padasi. Mm -hmm. I did take a look at, at Bocas del Toro, but it seems like it's kind of remote there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's a really good example. Like I say, some places are more remote. 
uh, that's a bit book is Toro is a bit over the river and through the woods to get there. Uh, right. Uh, but once you get there, it's, you know, it's the Caribbean. It's, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. There's less amenities, less infrastructure. Right. Now, how about uh, pets? Mm -hmm. Bring in your pets over. How does that work? Is that a challenge or? It's not, it's, it's, it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork. And again, you'll need your patience. Um, <laughs> Uh, and you know for whatever it's worth of course nobody wants to abandon their pets um i came here without any pets and today i've got two dogs and a cat and uh it's almost an obligation to adopt a dog or a cat when you get here uh, <laughs> they're everywhere okay now what on the i know some countries i can't remember if it was the dr or costa rica i saw if if you do, because they have a similar thing with the visa, the pensionado visa, when you're allowed to bring X amount of stuff import without having to pay duty on it, how does that work in Panama? That's you 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 just kind of touched on it. If you if you're uh, in the right in the right program, the pensionado. I, last time I checked, it was I, I think it was ten thousand dollars a year that you could bring over. I I, I would check with a lawyer because those things change all the time but there is there is an amount that you can bring uh without any duty or tax uh as a pensionado but again check to clarify how much that is and and, and what the process is because like i say things change right okay all I right see, thank you oh, yeah i see ahead. that carly carly texted that she's got some questions yeah, it looks like Edwin has his hand up too. So oh, I can't see the hand. I'm sorry, you were smart. You you texted, but that's okay. Not yeah, to say. we'll start with Carly, then we'll go to Edwin, and I think Stephen, you have another question as well. Okay, so Perfect. let's go to Carly. Okay. Just remember to unmute yourself when you're asking questions. Carly, are you still on? There you are. What are your questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andrea. She left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Edwin? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All right. Lovely. I'm on my desktop. I have no camera. So, um, yeah, my first question, uh, and Jasmine, you may be better for this because I'm curious about the Boquet region. I've never, again, um, like Stephen, I've not set foot in Panama. I've not even been close. Uh, been down to um, oh, I have been close. Uh, because I was in um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the country. That's two countries north of you guys. But anyways, uh, I was scuba doing some scuba diving in the Caribbean, and mm -hmm. I'm curious about the Boquet region and you know what are the prices of you know residential homes there, and what's the likelihood and or the complications of buying something with you know, land attached to it. Um, I'm thinking specifically about the coffee business and I may have a follow-up question or two. Okay. Uh, okay. So the cost of the residences here, the, it depends where you want to be. If you want to be in a gated community, if you want to be close to town or you want to be far from town. So, but it, it depends. A single home family that is not in a gated community that you can get like two bedrooms up to three can be between two hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand depends the size of the land also there is a lot of factors that it will um affect the price but depends exactly like what you are looking for if you want uh you can be in contact with us later and i can send you some options that you can start looking how they look. For example, we have uh, in most of our listings, we have videos of the houses and you can get a better feeling how how the house is, where it's located, what is around, uh, everything. Okay. Um, so I guess, you know, the follow-up would be to that is, is Bouquet like on the cusp of the coffee growing region? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so I, I don't know anything about the industry there besides... I know it exists and I don't see the, you know, if you, if you want to call it Panamanian coffee in our area of the world, um, we see all other sorts of, you know, types of places represented here. 
uh, you know, Honduras, which is where I was, by the way, um, you know, Colombian coffee, that sort of thing. But I've never actually seen that. So I don't know, you know, how big the the growing region is, you know, what kind of demand it's in. It sounds like the coffee is very good, which is wonderful. Um, but I'm just I'm just curious to know, like what, you know, what's the cost of like acreage in the area specifically to do with like, you know, coffee commercial, you know, type of land. There's a couple of different ways to go there. Uh, and like you said, you're not seeing Panama coffee there. I think that historically, most of the Panama coffee farms are kind of artisanal. They're smaller. So uh, they sell their their coffee to brokers who maybe white label um, the coffee. So it doesn't necessarily say, unless you look real close, perhaps, where it's from. But I, I'm seeing a bit of a shift. I think that, like you said, you're interested in coffee. It didn't sound like you've done it before. Um, I'm seeing people come from other countries with maybe knowledge on different ways to do things, more technology, perhaps uh, an infusion of more cash. Uh, so I'm seeing things kind of trending towards bigger and, and uh, more modern. And I think that the, the coffee industry <laughs> in Boquete and, and in Panama is going to change a little bit uh, to get more sophisticated. Um, so, you know, as far as, as far as somebody like yourself sticking your toe in the water, so to speak, you, you could either buy a piece of land and just start from scratch. You could uh, purchase uh, a farm from somebody that is on their way out and you bring in new technology and money and do it a different way, or maybe improve it or somehow change what they're doing. Um, or perhaps, you know, you, you could partner again, bringing in technology and money and partnering up with somebody that has a farm that is looking to get to the next level. So you have options. It just really depends on where you, where you see yourself fitting. I, I apologize about my vicious Westie in the background. She's fly chasing right now. So, um, <laughs> so my follow-up question to that was, and this may be a little specific, we could probably take it offline, but I was wondering what the the job market was like in the Bouquet region, you know, do they have schools, universities, like what's, what's happening there as opposed to like, say, you know, the Panama city area. Well, uh, here, you, okay. Um, here in Boquete, we have uh, private and public schools. And also we have uh, a one uh, branch of the big university in Panama is the public one. But in David, which is like 30 minutes driving from Boquete, we have a bunch of private universities too. I so, think he's looking for employment op opportunities. Is that correct? Yeah, more more or less. Yeah, for either myself and or my wife. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very tricky to come here and, and work per se. Uh, you can own a business and, and provide a service. Um, but to work as a teacher... Uh, there are there are many professions in Panama that are protected for Panamanians only. Um, there are there are like everything. There's ways around things, but to to come here and make money in education, you pretty much have to open a school um, because the school teachers here don't make make enough money that would like probably not enough to attract you uh, unless you were looking to volunteer and sure. Uh, things like that but um for you to just come here and go to a school and have them hire you as a teacher is, is a, a pretty tricky endeavor not impossible but uh, complicated. understood understood yeah. thank you yeah and i guess um that pretty much answers my question there i i would i would add that my my wife had um she had been an applicant for the King's College there in Panama City uh for one of their positions and i don't know if that was cuz it's more of an international school if it's a private school, so maybe that's why. Yeah, there. Like I say, there are there are there are avenues. It's just a little bit complicated, and it kind of limits your options, right? Um, but private schools would definitely be one of the options. Okay, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, Edwin. Um, Stephen, you are on mute, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Typical. Um, yeah, talking about the Pensionado visa, could you recommend any attorneys that could help us out with that process? I understand there's quite quite a number of them that can do it. Is you know, 
there's a range of prices I've seen as well. What what do you think we would likely have to pay? Um, and you know, do we is it worth going for the cheaper one, or do you get a better service if you pay a little bit more money? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, I would recommend that you talk to at, at least two, maybe three attorneys. We can uh, give you the recommendations on your. Yeah, paper. we definitely make recommendations. You interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would talk to two or three of them and, 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 you know, see who you get a warm fuzzy from and make sure the price structure is agreeable with you. But for the most part, they're all they're all very much the same. It's a very competitive uh, residency for attorneys, a pretty competitive arena. Uh, and you'll find that most of the expense associated with that are actually governmental fees. So uh, the attorneys aren't getting rich off of registration. Uh, okay. Great. Um, and just a question about uh, Bolchetti. So the nearest uh, city is David, and yes. that's roughly about 30 minutes away, did you say? Yes. How does that compare in terms of size and amenities to Panama, Panama City? It's smaller, uh, but it's growing very fast. Mm. So, you know, in five years, maybe the same or even bigger. <laughs> We have, uh, yeah, there is a lot of commercial investors that are coming to David right now. We are having a lot of uh, new malls. Um, there is a lot of infra infrastructure uh, happening also. Uh, American shops are coming, um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's growing very fast, to be honest with you. Very, very fast, which is good because we you have a lot of amenities here that you wasn't able to find like 10 years ago. So it's happening like this. Um, just one final question. Um, how how expensive are the internal flights? So say from Panama to David, how much would you have to pay for that? It, it depends. Um, it would be, I would say between $79 to $120 depend like uh, you are bringing the big bigger suitcases and all that okay. but it, yeah it, that's the range there is an there is a a new airline that is called Wingo which uh, actually belongs to Copa Airlines but it's uh, it's very cheap actually costs $30 per way wow. but they just fly twice per week so they fly every Friday and every Sunday so everybody that is looking for those flights, they have to make reservations ahead and then you can get those very good prices. It's called Wingo. Wingo. So yeah, we can provide you more information also later. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Great questions, everybody. Thank you for asking. Um, do we have any more questions from anybody? Uh, I've just thought of another one, actually, if there's no nobody else that wants to jump in. Go ahead. Okay, so so as I say, my wife and I are coming over in January. We're probably gonna be for three three months, probably minimum. Um, mm -hmm. so we're gonna be renting. So, what do you think would be our best course of action? Um, is it Airbnbs or are they private? private rentals, things like that. We we do want to move about, but we'd like to spend maybe, I, I don't know, maybe a month in, in three different areas. Um, for long-term rentals, uh, it's very difficult to find like one month, like month per month. Um, usually we have the minimum as a real estate agency, we, we have the minimum for six months in rentals. So what I recommend you, you want to do like one month by one month is Airbnb or if you are lo locally, locally, lucky to have, um, you know, the information for somebody that will rent you per month, we can help you with that. Yeah. To see, we can ask our owners to see there is somebody that wants to rent for one month, but it's not, um, basically when it's per month, they don't put it with the agencies, with real estate yeah. agents. They okay. just go through Airbnb. Okay. Yeah. I thought that might be the case. And depending yeah. on what time of year you're coming, uh, like if you're coming in the high season, I would. They are coming in the high season. You. They are coming in January. Yeah. So I would encourage you to book it now. Yeah, it's better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rentals in Boquete are a little are a little thin. So you you, you want to make sure you, you get on that now. 
Yeah, and also something very important before you come, you have to know that in January we have the Coffee and Flowers Festival, which is amazing. So that's right. why you have to make the reservations ahead now. Is that for the whole country? No, it's from Boquete. In Boquete, okay. Coffee and Flowers Festival. When does that start? It's in January. Uh, I need to check uh, the, the dates, but it's for one week. Okay. Um, one week, two weekends. Mm -hmm. Two weekends. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It looks like Carly is back. Okay. Um, Stephen, as for the rentals with regard to um, what we consider high season, right? So, think about it as the North American winter snowbirds that are flying south. So, yeah. it gets very booked up January to basically the end of March. Yeah. So, um, you know, and we will reach out. We have everybody's email, so I'm taking notes, and we'll reach out and and help you guys any way possible. Uh, you should have received an email from me that also has um your uh, buying and flipping in Panama attached to it. If you have not received that, that was sent just before we got on. Uh, reach out to me so I can send that again, and I can answer any questions with that email. But we will be following up with you as well because we definitely want to help you. And, as you can tell, we love Panama, so yeah, we, we want to bring bring all the folks to here. So, Carly, if you're back on, um, do you have some questions, please? Okay. No, Maybe she's we have anybody good. else with questions? Yeah, Mr. Dan has questions. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I don't know. Maybe just one second Go ahead. with Carly. Go ahead. I don't know um, if um, maybe if you're trying to ask them if your um, microphone is not working, maybe you could just type them in here because if you're speaking, I know you're unmuted. We are not hearing you. And we definitely want to answer your questions. OK, Dan. Uh, yeah, just one quick question. Uh, we were talking about rental property. I was wondering if, say we rented found something we like long-term, do you do you deal with property that if, okay, we really like this property where the owners would do like uh, rent, not rent to own, but something of that nature where like we have the, we could have the option to buy at some point. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That was all yeah, I had. Good, uh, good question. Carly, are you available to talk? Ask your question? Hi, are you getting out audio? Ah, uh, there you go. Yes, we are. Thank you. Great. Thank you. It's Graham and Carly from Durban. Hola. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're just interested in the entrance requirements. Um, being a age gap couple so i'm a little bit older than than carly and um just what difficult difficult difficulties could we have with getting into the country can you work i guess difficulties re um, you... regarding what uh visa requirements as an as an older person and uh work, work opportunities as well there's no real limit on the ages for the visa However, you know, the work to come, again, we, we kind of touched on that. Maybe you missed that part, but to come here and, and get a job is 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 challenging. If you wanted to come here and, and start a business, you, I think you said you're from Durban? Yes. We've worked with countless South Africans uh, that have come here and uh, established businesses because they, like I say, they, they, they're they not going to have an employer-employee relationship and they likely wouldn't be interested in working for Panamanian wages. So they um, open up a business. So lo lots of South Africans have come here and opened many businesses. Okay, That's thank good. you. And when do you have another question? Yeah, I've got a follow up. Um, okay. You mentioned, uh, I think it was Mike that mentioned that rentals are slim, uh, specifically in, in Bukit. Um, is there you know, is there demand? Is there a reasonable assumption that, um, you know, if somebody were to purchase an investment as an Airbnb, that there might be demand for it? Um, 
Absolutely. And are there and are there property management groups that would would handle that? Thank you. Yes to both. Yes. Yeah, and that's one of the things that um, inside Panama, which is Jasmine and Mike, can help you with because uh, Mike's been doing a lot of investing and. Uh, is working with investors. So like anywhere in the world, Airbnb has really taken off. Um, and it depends on the time of year that you're looking to come to Panama with regard to what's available to rent and not rent. Yes. Um, but all different kinds of options all across the country. Uh, you know, we talked about Petasi. Uh, Playa Vinal is very popular for surfing. So, so that gets very busy at different times of the year. Like Jasmine was talking about the... Um, the flower festival, which is really cool. So Panama has a lot of different opportunities for um, international um, folks to come and hang out and things to do. Uh, it, it seems like every day there's something fun and exciting that's going on that's that's been added to the um, the agenda. So yeah, do we? Yeah, go ahead, Jasmine. And Airbnb here is very, very, uh, it's getting very good. So, for example, right now, this weekend, there is Panamanian holidays. Everything will be packed with people coming and staying, you know, on the weekend. So, if you want to do an investment on in Airbnb, that's amazing because you will make a lot of money. And also, there is also some agents uh, that are part of the company that they do property management. And there is people that do that. So, we will be able to recommend you somebody you know, that we know and we can recommend highly. Very good. Thank I have you. one more question. Um, sure. With regards to, so we have a five-year-old son and we are homeschooling him. What is, is there any, like, is Panama very strict with homeschooling? Do they allow it? Um, what's that like? They allow homeschooling, yes. There's quite a okay, bit, awesome. actually. The South Africans, and again, are a lot of them go that route. A yeah. lot of the foreigners do because I guess the kids are a little bit hesitant to jump into Spanish-speaking schools. Uh, I think that, you know, of course, the kids learn so much faster. The, the, the sooner they dive in and start learning, the better. But I see that a lot of the uh, South Africans and a lot of expats tend to homeschool in the beginning. Okay. Um. We'll definitely long term. He's already being homeschooled, so long term. Um. The goal is to continue with that. I had one more question with regards to um. So, a couple of years ago, we were looking at um not Montenegro, uh Georgia, 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 um, to immigrate to, and one of the things that came up that ultimately stopped us, which is a bit controversial, but for us personally, um, we would have to vaccinate our child fully in order for him to be integrated and to live there mm -hmm. and that was a problem for us so what is that like over there if you choose not to jasmine i'm, I'm not certain i've, I've no, never I'm, heard, I'm, I've never I'm heard of a requirement I'm, like that in the question sorry i'm having troubles here I wants to know sorry. if it requires the children be fully vaccinated to enter the country who is recommend? Who who is asking that? Carly. Want, Carly wants to know if uh -huh. children have to be fully vaccinated to come into the country and go to school. No, no, that's not a requirement. No. So, but I wasn't positive. No. All right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Now here we are very flexible on that, so you don't have to be vaccinated. You know, so that's up to the up to the parents, up to the people. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Very good. Do we have any any other questions? We want to make sure we hit all of them before we go. Somebody is asking something here in the chat. About the bank. Okay. They're doing, uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Edwin, so is the bank who you've recommended for expats also good for investments? 20 to 25% down. Well, typically for a foreigner to obtain financing from a local bank, the minimum down payment is 30%. Um, so right off the hop, you know, we're off by a little bit there, but if you put 30% down uh, and, and uh, you, if you're with the right bank and Jasmine, like she said earlier, she has a good recommendation, um, you, you'll, you'll likely 
be okay. Very good. Okay. Any uh, other I last? Have a yep. Go ahead. What about off grid living? Is there a possibility of that? Yes. In terms of like in terms of safety, because over here in South Africa we have um like farm murders. So a lot of the people that are living out um in the countryside and off grid, um it's quite dangerous because they are people that go and literally murder farmers mm -hmm. for no real reason. I've met hundreds of them. Um, but the answer to your question is, you know, overall, Panama is a relatively very safe country. Uh, and when you're off grid, you know, further out in the, the boondocks, so to speak, it, it's it's really, really mm -hmm. peaceful. It's mostly farmers. It's very, very quiet. Um, That's nice. And, and it's not... I'm familiar with what happens in South Africa. We're nowhere near that. <clears throat> that's awesome. Okay, that's nice to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask another question? Of okay. course. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> business opportunities. Um, you spoke about that's the way to go for, for an expat. What are good avenues to get into there? Maybe you should say what you actually currently do. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. That. What is it? What's your background? I currently I'm qualified in mechanical engineering, and I have my own generator company, industrial generators. Okay, so that's kind of a specialized field, and in Panama there is there is room for people like yourself that have a specialized field to actually contradict what I said earlier. Have that employer employee relationship because you bring a skill that may be limited here in Panama. Uh, so if you have a skill that is limited, there are, there are, there are definitely uh, employment opportunities. Uh, or the other option is to open up a business that provides a service doing what you do. Um, like I say, many South Africans have come here and started, you know, I know they're really big in their, in their bribes. So there's lots of them now doing <laughs> doing uh, meat options they offer and all sorts of jerky and meats and uh there's somebody that works for us whose husband came with the uh the grinding wheels that uh cut metal uh he happened to have a, a better wheel than anybody had seen in panama up until that time so right away his business took off like a rocket um you know, one thing I was not exposed to South Africans really until they started coming to Panama and I got exposed to quite a few of them. And I was really amazed at how uh, industrious they are and how many things that they that they can do and do do. I didn't know they were boat builders and things like that. So uh, there's lots of opportunities here for, for people with skills um, and whether that's working for somebody or starting your own business. Uh, service related, it tends to work best. Okay, thank you. I think I think our main concern. So my husband is the Graham is six. Well, it's not six yet. He's fifty nine. Um, but if I may add, a very young fifty nine. He's still, you know, hockey player, gym, you name it. Um, and my concern, like our concern around that, after doing some research, is like, you can't get in on some countries after fifty five. For example, no. with a work visa. You don't have that issue. Oh wow! Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not for visas. The only issue that I'm aware of was always when you went for a mortgage. The max age you could be would be 75, right? So if yeah. you were 65 looking for a mortgage, you got a 10 year mortgage. Right. That's right. Yes. That's a good. Mm. Okay, nice. Yeah. That's yeah. I think we like yeah. Like Graham said, we're young. Well, we are a young family. <laughs> um, me and my <laughs> son. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of you know there's many years still to come. So Graham is not neither of us obviously um on your retiring anytime soon. Um, but you know we looked at New Zealand as an option, and but that was before he was fifty five, and then. Something happened and that fell through, and now that's not an option anymore because he can't get in on a work visa after fifty five, and um, and then Panama, which was also on our list like quite a few years back, it just popped up again, so that's kind of what's led us to this discussion here in 
on this Zoom meeting <laughs> is actually, um, you know, doing some research on Facebook and Google and whatever, and then finding this. Well, it's a good idea for you to really thoroughly research it because my experience with the South Africans is with your currency, um, different, you know, when you convert, it, it's so expensive for you that yeah. it's really important to do a lot of research because once you come here and spend quite a lot of money moving a family here, going back to South Africa is probably not an attractive option. So wherever you pick, you want to really do your homework, which sounds like you're doing. I think you'll find Panama is a pretty good option and a good fit, mostly because like you said, you, you found obstacles in many countries. Panama, like I said earlier, is one of the easiest places in the world to get residency if you qualify. In South Africa, of course, you qualify for the Friendly Nation visa. Uh, Very nice. Well, most of the other things are, are resolvable uh, for, for, for your, your skill set. Yeah. And is, for, yeah. is for getting a driver's like license a... is easy? Oh, yeah. Um, is is there a big um, market for photographers, for photography? Is that like a big thing over there? Well, the short answer is yes. However, not likely for the same amount of money that you might be accustomed to, depending on. We have we have several photographers that work for us and then they had to adjust to Panama wages. <laughs> um, yes. So. Yes, there's a there's a market for it, but maybe not okay. uh, as lucrative as perhaps other areas. And you make different type of works, like weddings, parties, you know, this kind of thing. It, then you can have more opportunities. But if you are just focused to one thing, it will be more difficult. We I, have I, we have a photographer that he does also like weddings, events, and yes. anything you need. And then also he does real estate. Oh yes, okay. I do actually. I'm in a very niche market. I do um birth photography. Ah, uh, see, but if you start doing another things like uh, for example, real estate or restaurants, things like that, if you learn how to do it and you start doing that, you will open more your opportunities. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We see a lot of folks um with that are remote workers as well, right? Yeah. Are they living in Panama, but they're working online for other companies around the world. And that's, again, what we talked about, this digital thing that you don't necessarily, especially our teachers, have to be working in a school in Panama. You could be teaching English as a second language or working for a university somewhere else in the world. So keep that, you know, think, think largely, not just locally. Um, what are some of the options of things that you could do? I mean, a mechanical engineer, I don't know what, what's your speciality is Graham, but you know there's possibility you could still work online for someone else and live in panama okay good questions really good questions um and we're happy Mark, that if we i can just be here. sure i'm going to squeeze, squeeze in another one there for you but you're not see um is it complicated to open up a business there Well, I guess opening a business anywhere is complicated. Um, it, 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 you know, my advice, because I've seen many, many people come here and start businesses, and is is to have a really good plan. Uh, plan your work, work your plan. Um, most of the time, when I see people come here and, and and start a business, if it doesn't work, it's usually because it wasn't very well thought out or there wasn't enough operating capital to get them on their feet. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually this, you know, similar reasons why things fail. Um, yes. Might've been a bad idea to begin with, who knows? Um, I think that, I mean, I get it. When you get here, you don't have a lot of time to start earning money um, before, you know, before things get a little bit bleak. Um, so you really want to research and make sure that whatever you're spending that money on to get established is <clears throat> is well spent and well researched so that it doesn't evaporate all for naught. Um, 
but with your skill set, I'm I'm pretty confident that you're gonna you're you're gonna be in, in a pretty good shape. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, we we've seen that happen before because the question is definitely, you know, we have great ideas about what we think businesses should be, but we have to know our audience, right. and that is so important. We we had a gentleman who opened dumped a lot of money. I think he was from Argentina or Brazil or something and opened a gyro, a restaurant. And I think he died within the first couple months because it wasn't something that um, the expats were interested in or the Panamanians were interested in. It was unfortunate because he had spent a ton of money uh, mm -hmm. remodeling this restaurant. So before, you know, come with your idea, but, you know, do your research, look around, see what's needed, what, what, what has been here. I mean, Jasmine and Mike are a wealth of information with regard to um, what what they see, who they can put you in contact with, um, you know, how they can help you with your next adventure in Panama or somewhere around the world. Because um, it is uh, for a lot of people, it's a big move. And if you have limited funds, then it, it you definitely, like Mike said, you don't you don't want to lose all of those in a short amount of time. So that's why we're doing the the webinar, and we're glad you guys are here. We will be able to give you the link to uh, go back and watch it or to share it with whoever, but we will reach out and give you some additional information. If we don't have any more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But if we do, we're happy to take them. And does anybody have any more? Nope, very good. All right, so let's, let's look at what uh, we talked about today. So what makes Panama attractive? We went over some of the visas, the taxation system, some popular investment regions, the buying process, the healthcare system, the education system, some resources and networks for you. And we had some really great, great questions and answers. You guys are thinking of a lot of really great things. So we want to continue to stay in touch, as I said. If you haven't received your buying and flipping uh, property in Panama, reach out to me so I can send it again. But Panama has lots of options. And for more information, you can reach out to me at Cynthia at laymanteam.com. But I also will get you in touch with Inside Panama Real Estate. Uh, and they will help you with tours. They will help you with rentals, with purchasing. They're kind of a one-stop shop. Like I said, when we first started, they've been voted for three years in a row. Uh, number one buying and selling on Aquabeer, which is like the MLS for those of you who are familiar with that term. They have eight locations across the country, so they know the area, they know the country really well, and again, they can can help you wherever you want to be. So I think we've probably answered almost every question with regard to tours and visas and connecting you with people. We're happy to do that, and we're again so happy that you guys spent this time with us, and uh, we look forward to staying in touch with you. Mike and Jasmine, do you have anything you'd like to offer before we go? I want to say thank you uh, for everybody that came and joined us. Um, you know, we are always here very happy to help uh, newcomers and people, you know, that need our guidance. So feel free to reach out and we will be more than happy to start, you know, this new adventure for you guys. Thank you. I Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. I too would like to thank Cynthia for putting this on and, and thank everybody for attending today and um, reiterate what Jasmine said. We're, we're here to help you. Uh, we're very easy to work with and uh, we're looking forward to meeting you here in Panama. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Thank Bye. you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Good night.